One of the fundamentals of data warehouse design when, when we're talking about doing dimensional models along lines of a Kim Kimball dimensional data warehouse is that we're going to organize our relational data warehouse into a star schema. And um, uh, it, it's, why do we do that? Um, you know, why don't we just design a data warehouse the same way we design a transactional database? Um, and we're going to talk about that for, for just a couple minutes. So we're going to come back to, to this design. This is uh, a collection of tables that makes a very, very simple data warehouse. And you might just call this a data mark because there's, there's not just not that much here, but, um, but it'll be very instructive. But before we look at that, let's take a look at our more typical third normal form um, transactional database. And when, when you look at one of these, you see the first thing that, that hits you is there's just a lot of tables and a lot of complexity in the way that they're joined. So we see um, uh, joins that go through tables and keep going and, and you know continue on to other lookup tables that continue on to other lookup tables. Uh, and, and this all is excellent modeling for a transactional system. It keeps the uh, amount of redundancy in tables to a minimum. It makes inserts very efficient. It makes updates very efficient. Uh, if uh, if the category description for a product uh, or the mo if the model name for a, a product uh, it changes, um, I don't need to change the product table. There's a model table that has that information that that's updated in one place, and it doesn't need to affect that many rows in this table. So this is fantastic stuff for transactional systems, but. Uh, to query this kind of a database is just daunting um, it, 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 for most people. If you understand this design in completely, it's great. If you don't, you're going to spend the first couple of weeks working with this database just trying to figure out what's in it. It's not intuitive for uh, users that aren't expert in its design. It's also not efficient from a query perspective um, in, in terms of joins. If you want to extract a lot of information and slice and dice out of this kind of a database, you're going to be joining maybe a dozen of these tables on each one of your queries. And so that can be a problem. From a performance point of view, the engine's going to work really, really hard and the queries are going to be really, really difficult. So to solve some of those problems and challenges, I should say, in a star schema design, we really flatten things out. So we try to minimize the number of joins that we have between the metric data like the sales data in this table and the um, areas that we're going to slice that data by such as item store time and so on so uh, so you will notice in in the item table and this is a bit more simplified but you know we don't have a separate category table we we have the category description right in with the item and if we looked at that table the category would be repeated over and over and over and a transactional database designer would look at it and go oh, that's terrible I mean it's it's so denormalized it's not efficient and you know that's just the wrong way to design a database which is true if your goal is design a transactional insert database but from a query standpoint it makes it super easy for the users and honestly in uh, most data warehouses the 98 percent of your storage is in this fact table right here these others are two percent so the uh, waste of space it really doesn't matter but why does we call it a star well quite simply we call it a star because that's what it looks like so if we look at um, this uh, this schema when we're done with it we actually have something that looks like a star and so we give it the name star schema so a silly reason to call it a uh, star schema but that's pretty much it um, but the, the what you're looking for in these is that you don't have a lot of joins so um, really for any query we're gonna have one join to get any piece of information in any direction and we'll take a look at a query that uh, that uses that. Now I, I will just mention very in passing um, you might hear the, the term um, snowflake schema and uh, what a snowflake schema means is, is just that our star is developing a little bit of a, well, let me put a couple of attributes in here, um, our, our schema is developing a little bit of, of uh, um, I'll call this model, uh, model table here, is developing a little bit of, of, of more complexity and uh, let's say I had a model um, table that was connected to my items and I put it over here and I then connect it to the model table 
Um, so now you see I'm not really a star anymore. I'm starting to look like something else. And, and if you think of the way a snowflake looks, um, you get this kind of radial spire pattern out that keeps going. So um, some people think snowflakes are bad. Some people think they're fine. Um, I'm a little agnostic about this. Um, sometimes it is necessary, but one thing to keep in mind is this, this model key uh, that we put out here. We need to have a key in, in this table that refers to the, uh, the model table. We, we could just as easily put these attributes into the item table itself and that, that design would work just as well. So, so there will always be a bit of a disagreement on whether to snowflake, not to snowflake. Um, if you get too carried away with a snowflake design, you are right back to a third normal form database. So be cautious with that. So that's what the star schema looks like. Um, let's just look at why this makes query so much easier. And it works pretty much like this. So here's sort of a typical query that we might do on a star schema where we're just saying give me sales and and I'm doing inner joins and, and each of these joins is just going in one direction so we're not doing inner join item and then joining from item to something else and that something else to something else like we would in a in a third normal form database so to get any piece of information we just have one join out to a dimension table we have a where clause here and if we want to drill down we just keep adding to the um, to the where clause so that's my sales for the week and if I want to drill down and give me just the West I can do that if I want the category I do that but because all of this information is in these nearby dimension tables it's very quick so this query is very simple it's easy to follow um, and it's pretty easy for end user tools to do this kind of thing where you just keep adding to the where clause in order to drill down so that's what a star schema is about that's what it looks like and that's how we use it